Peter, the PlayStation 5. It's on everyone's mind lately. It's It's been kind of rumored that there will be another PlayStation for at least probably a good two years now. There's been murmurings, there's been reports, there's been little tidbits of information, but Sony have never really came out and clarified anything. Even though as, as obvious as that concept is that there will be another PlayStation, Sony have been kind of uh, tight-lipped about it. Up until now, up until recently, uh, Sony's president and CEO, Kenichiro Yoshida? <laughs> Kenichiro. I'm, I'm sure I got that wrong. It's Kenichiro. Kenichiro Yoshida, in an interview with the Financial Times said, At this point, what I can say is, it's necessary to have next generation hardware. We will use the next three years to prepare the next step to crouch down so that we can jump higher in the future. This should shock nobody, but it is interesting that they are at least coming out and being like, Yeah, no, it's, it's gonna happen. I don't think anyone would have ever said, like, a PS5's not happening? Holy... Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, it's gonna happen. What is interesting, though, is he said three years, which caught me off guard. I initially thought that maybe this would be a shorter generation, considering that uh, when the PlayStation 4 launched, it wasn't exactly... Like, when you, when you go back to the 360 launch, the 360 in 2005, in terms of hardware, it was comparable to high-end PCs at the time, even slightly better. Yeah, it was very cutting edge, and it was using technologies that weren't even mainstream in PC rendering yet. Yeah, and with the PlayStation 4 launch, the Xbox One, you can't really say the same. Like, there were, at the time, arguably you could build a better computer. Sure, it cost probably a lot more than what those consoles were, but it wasn't really comparable. No, I, I remember specifically at the launch that I wasn't very impressed with either of them, but, you know, early launch games are always crappy anyway, so... Yeah. So yeah, it felt like this launch was a little underpowered compared to the the previous stuff. So I thought for sure like this would be a shorter generation. This would be another four to five year thing. But I guess this is the new standard. This this weird seven to like nine year cycle. In a long At least from Sony decade. and Microsoft. Nintendo seemed to be still following a pretty short regiment. So that'll be interesting because by the time then that a potential PlayStation 5 is is rolling out, Nintendo might be rolling out something. <laughs> so, that would be a hell of a thing. Nintendo is always going to be now like a generation ahead a little bit because they never slow. They never really slowed down. What whereas uh, Sony and Microsoft have been kind of spreading thin here with these generations. But uh, that said, my I think my favorite thing about new consoles and, and new console rumors are all the weird and awful fan-made prototype images. <laughs> oh, they're they're already like if if you just type in. PlayStation 4 fan-made image into Doodle Images, you will find some magical stuff. I remember those fake Switch ones. People are really obsessed with, like, plexiglass and round consoles, I'm noticing. That's a common trend. People want an Otama Game Sphere. That was the... (laughs) Jesus. That was the thing with the Switch. was like It was just a big, massive, oval touchscreen. And I don't know why anyone thought that would be a People are obsessed with a, a spherical system. Yeah, they just want I, their. I don't know. Uh, they want their game orb, or as you said, the Okama Game Sphere. Hell yeah! <laughs> That'll be the best timeline. Once we once we enter the the realm of spherical consoles, video games will never be the same. You'll have to freeze yourself to get one. <laughs> but uh, that said, with the PlayStation Five, I guess at least three years away, uh, we're going to discuss the features we want to see. Getting the obvious right out of the way: native 4K support. Like that just it just has to be a thing at this point. Like, if if the PlayStation 5 is still doing the weird, like, rendering it does to, like, that mock 4K, I'd... I'd the checkerboard Jesus. rendering? Yeah. Yeah, the checkerboard stuff. Um, I mean, this could even go for... The, well, the Xbox One X does do more native 4K games, but even then, most of them are not native. Yeah. So, yeah, for any console, Sony's PS5 or Microsoft's Xbox 2 like to see yes if not native 4k rendering then a much more stable performance and uh, that said while well, i was actually uh, doing some research for this episode i was uh seeing all kinds of uh, of, of rumors and, and weird speculation that like this next playstation might even aim for 8k and that at <laughs> least sony is looking into that possibility I, of 8k no. video games and this just reminds me of when they were when they were beating their chests that the PlayStation 3 could do 1080p at 120 hertz for its games. Yeah. So I I don't think 8k games will be a thing for a while still. No, but I mean there are 8k monitors coming out for PCs, but there's no video card that can even run anything. Like even if you yeah, had like, like right quad now, if you're SLI. Looking for, 
if you're looking for like an 8k monitor at most you're you're gonna find wart station like oled 8k monitors that aren't for gaming they are for they're for heavy editing use and mastering movies and such. <laughs> yeah. They're not for gaming. There is that Dell 8K monitor, but it's also five grand. So, you know, and I think it's only like 27 inches. So it's not particularly good value unless you're just rich. Following that, I think, and this is this is where I start grasping at straws, and, and this is where wishful thinking comes into play, but I really hope we go back to targeting 60 frames as like the new standard. Because for the past decade now, and, and longer even, 30 FPS has essentially been the mainstay for consoles. Like, that has been the target goal to achieve for any game on consoles, is 30 FPS. Yeah, it's not even a consistent 30 most of the time. Yeah, yeah, and as someone who just recently built a new PC and has been getting back into into newer games on PC and playing them again in 60 FPS, man, it's it feels good. It's night and day. I mean, <laughs> so you don't have to tell me that. I've been a PC guy for basically my whole life, and that's one of the major reasons why I play it. I was primarily on PlayStation 4 in terms of in terms of new releases for a good five six years now and admittedly like the frame rate stuff it doesn't bother me as long as as long as it's consistent but in terms of preferences I will take sit any day of the week yeah I mean Zelda's one of my favorite series and pretty much all of the 3d ones run at 30 so like I can deal with it but no way in hell are you gonna tell me 30 feels better it doesn't 60 is just so much more responsive and even if the game is lower fidelity in general visuals, 60 usually looks sharper. So it even has an edge there. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather see performance being the main focus instead of just raw fidelity with 4K or 8K. But uh, the next feature I want to see, and this is one I will I will beat the drum for constantly. Pretty sure I'm in sync uh, with this. Is backwards compatibility. Yeah. With uh, PlayStation 4 games, because. PlayStation 4 games on that architecture don't work on the PlayStation 5, which I can only assume is going to use the exact same architecture. I will be floored. Yeah, I I can still see PS3 games not being a thing because the cell processor was such a freaking cluster yeah. of nonsense. But if PS4 games are not supported, uh, something's going wrong here. Like, There's no way we're going to change the architecture completely again from an industry standard to some proprietary thing. In, in the topic of wishful thinking, I would hope at least they might try and take a note from Microsoft and attempt to even have backwards compatibility for the PlayStation 1 through 3, even if it's through emulation. Because uh, then they could do all kinds of neat upscaling and all kinds of stuff like that. PlayStation 3 is always going to be that hard one just because of the cell, but... The PS4 is strong enough to brute force through a PS1 and 2 emulator, as already evidenced by PS2 emulation on the system. So there's no reason why the PS5 shouldn't at least have PS1 and 2 support. Yeah, and even potentially have enough brute force for PS3 emulation. Like, PlayStation 3 emulation is on the way, at least on the PC side of things. So yeah, our PCS3, it runs fairly good in newer versions, and while there's still some graphical glitches, I mean... It shows that stronger hardware can produce the PS3 console again. So, yeah, I could possibly see the PS5 having it, but, you know, the PS3 is such a strange beast, so there's any kind of number of things that could go wrong there. It, it could be like an Xbox One X situation where, like, only certain Xbox original games are currently supported. They could, like, dole that out throughout the PlayStation 5's life cycle. Like, if they came out and said, yeah, we're going to have PlayStation 3 emulation... For, for now, for maybe like the 50 or so games, we'll add more in the future. That'd be great. I'd be stoked for that. Yeah, that would be perfect for me. I would gladly wait to have more games available instead of just axing the feature entirely. And uh, finally, the last feature I would like to see on the PlayStation 5 or hypothetical PlayStation 5, whatever they decide to name it. If they call it anything but the PlayStation <laughs> 5, I'd be... It's going to be the PS5. Be <laughs> It'd be a dumb idea to give it like a, a weird sub name. But anyways... A second generation and improved version of the PlayStation VR headset, I think, would be huge, with better motion controllers. Because right now, as someone who's dabbled in PlayStation Move, my biggest issue is those Move controllers. They just, it just doesn't work as, as well as I'd want it to. There's all kinds of weird stuttering issues, and it's just nowhere near as good as what you see on the Oculus and the Vive. I haven't played with the PSVR, but I remember some of the Move games on PS3, and the technology didn't even work as well as the Wii at launch. I know that has more to do with it was actually using an accelerometer instead of infrared, but 
like Resident Evil 4 controls better than Resident Evil 5 does on Move. And I still feel like if we're gonna see VR become a sustainable thing, I feel like it needs to break into the mainstream. And I feel the best way to do that right now is on consoles. And I feel like the PlayStation VR is the answer to that. If if Sony decides to keep pushing the PlayStation VR and improve and build upon it, while maintaining that low price point, that that low barrier of entry on the PlayStation 5, that could be it. That could be the answer to break into the mainstream market with VR. The PSVR is VR's best chance at becoming a mainstream success because of its price. So if Sony could improve that technology and still keep that lower price point, I think eventually we'll see VR adoption grow. It's such a tantalizing prospect, and from the sh few VR demos I've tried, like it is very immersive. It's just I don't have seven hundred dollars to blow on a headset. So, you know, the PSVR's three hundred dollar price point. That's interesting. And it definitely makes me excited, but there just needs to be something better. And I think the other thing is, too, that the games need to focus on offering both. I think Resident Evil 7 is the best example of that. Resident Evil 7 can be played without it, but it also can be played in VR. And in my opinion, it's the, like, the definitive way to play that is in VR. But having that option to still play it without VR, I think, is important. If, if the PlayStation VR is going to keep pushing forward, that needs to be the standard for a lot of these games. Like, I think about if, if Red Dead Redemption 2, for example, got ported to the PlayStation 5, and they added in a PlayStation VR-supported mode into that, that'd be incredible. It would look a lot better than it would on PS4 as well. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, playing an open-world game, like, well, they have Skyrim, I suppose. But Yeah, Skyrim on PSVR is, uh, it's, I don't know. <laughs> we need our PlayStation Sphere. That's the next one. It's not five anymore. Oh, that'll be the next name. PlayStation Sphere. PlayStation Sphere. And somehow it, it doesn't roll around when you put it on your television stand. It just floats. That'd be, that'd be the main feature. It's just a PS4, but it's round, and it doesn't move when you put it on a table. Yeah, it somehow levitates. and 100 million units sold. Bam. <laughs> Instantly. But what features do you want to see on the PlayStation 5? Let me know down below, and for all your future video game news, reviews, and more, be sure to head on over to Destructoid.com.